Hello lovelies, welcome to this special episode of Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. In this week's episode, you get to be a fly on the wall at my most recent public talk at the Wellness Expo in Addison, Texas. If you love it and decide you'd like to be here to see me in person in the near future, there will be details about how to do that at the end of this recording. me already okay fantastic I see some kids moms and dads I have a potty mouth if you're okay with that so am I <laughs> okay I'll try to tone it down but um, fair warning um, okay who listens to my podcast anybody already I'm sorry honey I have a podcast so you don't listen to it do you okay I've got some cards I will leave up here later if you need help finding it okay there's new episodes every week and it's on everything so if you're already with podcasts, you'll find it. It's not hard to find. Lessons from the universe. Um, okay, so those of you who know me, who've been around to hear me talk before, you know I don't like to single people out in a crowd. I think it's awkward and weird, and it also takes away from messages of which there are many. Also, the night before I come to this event, I get this image of the room and um, some of you will have seen that I draw little things, <laughs> right, with little messages for people in the room. Um, I used to always like to send this, save this for the end, but um, I am long-winded and I can talk. So we're going to do this first, <laughs> okay? Um, okay. Yes, ma'am, I will do my best. I am a fast talker. It is true. I understand you're a fast talker. I understand. Okay, so I have somebody near the back who um, I think has got quite a few tattoos. And I want to tell you that the illness, the symptoms that you are having, that's not real. It's lymphatic blockage from the ink. So go and get some lymphatic work, okay? Get a lymphatic drainage massage, jump on a fucking trampoline, do something to shake up the lymphatic system. Those of you who don't know this, the lymphatic system is your filter and it has no pumps. It cannot clean itself. So you have to do something to activate it. And, um, my husband not that long ago had a full arm tattoo. He ended up with all these lumps and you know, you Google that and you think you have cancer. Uh, <laughs> I kept telling him it was the tattoo ink. So I Googled it. And if you need to do that to believe me, there's plenty of evidence of people who had lymph nodes biopsied and then they were full of tattoo ink. So don't ignore your symptoms, the lethargy, all that kind of stuff. Pay attention. Let's get this handled before it causes you a real problem. Okay. Um, Back over here, I have someone who definitely is seeing spirits, okay? I want you to know this is not paranoia. Just because it's in your peripheral vision does not mean it's not real, okay? Spirit will differ from your physical senses so that you know you're not crazy, okay? When you see spirit over here, you turn your head and it's gone just like a bird out the window. So know that that is real. I see the angel wings walking by the open doors. This is happening. You are not crazy, <laughs> okay? So take that confirmation and work with your ability to focus out and let that come into focus for you. When someone has a reading with me or even talking here, you may notice sometimes I, I stare off. That's to get my human vision out of the way so that what we pick up from spirit can come into focus. Okay, if you turn your head, it's going to go. That's to make sure you know you're not crazy. <laughs> okay, even when you hear spirit, if you hear it in your ears like my voice now, that's when you're crazy. Okay, if it's in your brain right here, that lump of meat in your head, that's when you're making it up. When you hear spirit, it's somewhere outside of you. Okay, and the more you pay attention, the better you'll get at differentiating between them. I like to. I'm, the more you pay attention to where your thoughts live, the better you'll get at differentiating. Okay, so let's say you're talking to your mother and you can tell the words are living in your brain, right? Then that is when, it's like when you start thinking about what you want for lunch, right? Start thinking about cheeseburgers, maybe I'll go out to Snuffers. I'm thinking I can feel it. And the more you practice, the more aware you will be. That's how you know, because everybody thinks, oh, I'm making it up, okay? That's where it will live. Then people think they're crazy. Well, the only way you're crazy is if you're hearing it like my voice right now, okay? You're not going to hear spirit the way you hear me. A lot of people will say, I don't hear it, I feel it. 
but they actually are hearing it. It's just not in their ears, okay? And the more you are aware of that, the more you pay attention to everyday thoughts, right? Even walking out of here and trying to make sure that you don't slip, right? You can hear those thinkings are going on in your brain, and that helps you get to where you can tell the difference between spirit and human bullshit instantaneously, okay? All right. I also have somebody, yes, your grandmother is showing you butterflies. Do not just pretend that it's just butterflies and everybody sees butterflies. That is for real. That is for you. Okay? Um, I want to thank you for sitting right there today. D who here knows Irene? Anybody? The, she was the grandmother, so the matriarch of this. She passed away last year. Very close. It was real important. I had to okay. She always sat in this chair for me. Okay? And I had written down that Irene was going to place somebody in that chair for me. And you have a similar energy to her. Thank you for being here. Is it my mother? No, no, no. There was a woman who came here. She came to every talk I ever did. Okay. She passed away last year. Okay. And she told me she was going to sit somebody in her chair. Okay. And there you are. So thank you for that. OK. Um, <laughs> we have somebody who is grounding really wrong. Okay, if your energy is all up here, this is right over, I mean, it could be all of you, but right over in here, okay, if you are thinking of your grounding like tree roots, you, it doesn't work. Okay, we talk about that all the time, having roots like a tree, but our human brain knows trees don't walk, and so it's not permanent. You have to think of it that your spirit comes down from source, it fills you up, and then it spreads into the earth and it is swirling, curling energy that moves with you as you move. It stretches with you as you stretch. And I'm guessing you must be a really visual learner because <laughs> I drew it, <laughs> okay? So if you need to see what this looks like, you're coming in from above, and then it's down into the earth. Those of you that can see can probably see that I have a root system that spreads out over this whole property. I have cultivated this over time and it's part of why I get clear messages because I'm grounded always, right? We are here to be human, and if your spiritual gifts start to mess with your human experience, you will get turned off. We are here for our own human interaction and our own life school first and foremost, okay? So if you are trying to expand your gift, you gotta stay clear on that, pass the test, no hypocrites allowed, okay? All right. Um, let's see. The last one that I had does go along with what I wanted to talk to y'all about today. And that is, I have somebody over here who does not feel like they are in the right body or of this <laughs> earth. And I want to tell you that, um, first of all, you are, you're here, you came, <laughs> okay? But your body is not like a pet for your spirit, okay? Your spirit should not be like the dog on a leash or the balloon on a string. We have got to be all one all the time, like that picture, right? When you get the feeling you're over here, you're off in the ethers or whatever, I want you to think about grabbing your own hand and pulling yourself back in. Okay, that's not for spirit, it's for your brain, <laughs> okay? Nothing is for spirit, spirit is perfect. But our human brain is the part that stays separate from our truth, and so everything, Everything that we do is about getting our brain to believe. All spiritual practice is about getting your brain to believe. All meditation, all visualization, all affirmation, all of it, right? You can do the most elaborate spiritual practice you want, but if you're not clear that you're not asking spirit to do something, you're waking your brain up to align to it, it's, it's a waste of your time other than maybe it's socially fun or relaxing, okay? Everything is about making your brain believe. Right? When you ask your energy to be cleared, the visualization you use with that, it, you could tell spirit, clear me. But your brain doesn't want to believe that. It needs to see what that looks like within you. This is why when you have a spirit guide, it shows up looking like a human being, usually, or some kind of being you can recognize. Spirit doesn't really look like a being. It does that for the human of us. That is so our brain can wrap itself around that this is something that loves me enough that I could hug it, right? My primary guide looks like a man. Well, I never trusted women until I was an adult. Um, and so that was part of why it had to be a male figure, 
right? I needed to believe that this was something that was going to keep me warm and safe. So the idea that these strong arms can wrap around me is what helped me give in to the reality that there was something bigger than me helping guide me through this place. If that makes sense. Okay, so here's the deal. Your body is like a car, and life is kind of like NASCAR, <laughs> okay? You just have to take care of this thing, right? The NASCAR driver knows that his car runs differently when the weather is different. You need to know that you work differently when the moon is different. You work differently when your hormones are different. You work differently when there's human shit going on. And if you are a steward, a student of yourself, you can get good at that, right? My best friend is a hot mess the day before the new moon. She takes off work that day, <laughs> right? If she hadn't been paying attention to that, there was a pattern there, she would just think that sometimes she's a hot mess and has no control. What a great, if you're gonna take a day, take the day that you need to be the hell away from everybody else, right? Like, great. Pay attention to yourself. Realize that our flesh is one organ. It is a single organ of the body, just like any other. It is your car. And the vision that you can see through your eyes right now is like the windshield of that car. Take a minute every day to think of it that way. I am spirit who picked out this car, and here I am, and I'm looking out of this body. I'm not the body. I'm looking through it. The more that you habitually, continually think about it that way, the more you will get aligned to the spirit and the truth of you and all your everyday stuff, right? I'm not all about woo-woo. We got jobs, okay? I'm privileged I get to talk to spiritual people every day. Thank you, universe. But I was a teacher. I know people have jobs. We've got to go into the world and deal with people who suck and deal with other people's egos and deal with circumstances out of our control. The more that you remember... I chose to drive this car around, to be in this place where I'll be forced to learn who I am, the easier it is. So when you feel that loss, that what's the point, that oh my God, I'm going to strangle that person <laughs> at work, whatever it is, ask yourself, those of you who know me can really say it with me, what do I learn, how do I grow? And look out this windshield at the life that your spirit placed you into so that you could truly become everything that you came to be. And guess what? No, you're not there yet. You're not gonna be there till you die, till you graduate. Quit trying to get there. It's not about the destination. When will I be able to listen to my intuition all day, every day? Who fucking cares? Just do your best, keep going, keep getting better, right? When will I know that I'm receiving information from spirit? When will I be able to walk in my body and constantly be aware of who I am? Who cares? right? Hopefully tomorrow, but maybe not. Just keep getting better every day. Keep doing it every single day. And do not let your spirit be on a balloon string. It's not doing that to you, by the way. Spirit never wants to be separate from you. You're doing it because maybe you don't believe you're worthy. Maybe you have trouble reconciling that some chunk of the universe, of that thing that maybe you call God, could really want to be here as you right now. I'm here to tell you it is much more egoic to say that that is not possible than to accept the reality that the universe wanted to experience this thing and it chose to do it as you. When I think about what I do every day, when I think about the privilege and the responsibility of the things I say to people every day, I believe with of me, that it is more egoic for me to say, I cannot help you, than it is to say, the universe will put words into my mouth for you, and I'm going to give them to you, and then to release control, because you may or may not decide to take action. That is non-attachment, right? We have to do that too, you guys, with your kids, with your friends, with your moms, right? That role right, when suddenly you're the mom to your own mom. Dude, you cannot wake her up, you cannot change her, and you don't need her to fix herself for you to be okay, right? When your mom passes away and you do not recognize that she was broken and you're supposed to be better than her, she is gonna yell at me for you, and I don't wanna hear it, <laughs> okay? All right, um, how am I doing on time? Let's see, oh, I'm good!
good, okay. So another thing that has been really around me this week, I've got two other things. Um, those of you who know me have, know I have themes. It's like everybody in a week or in a month has got the same thing. I keep saying it over and over and over. I'm sure there's some astrological connection, but I don't know what it is, okay? So the first thing is when you have a feeling or an intuition or even a dream about something wrong with your body, you need to pay attention to it. We have a tendency to think it's scary and to decide it's some kind of diagnosis, and so we don't look. But it is almost never that. It is prevention. It is to get you to get off your ass and take some more vitamin D or quit eating so much meat <laughs> or get some sleep or whatever. So when you have that thing, make sure you really look at it. You don't turn away for fear of what that could be. Um, okay, I'm gonna give you a specific example. It's personal and disgusting, but whatever. Okay, so my whole life I had visions of what I thought was me dying in childbirth, okay? Blood everywhere, chaos everywhere, people everywhere. This was so frightening to me that I never would let the vision play out. I was like this, nope, nope. And I was terrified of having children. I dreamt, those, again, those of you know me, I have twins. They turn nine next week, by the way. Um, I dreamt about them since the time I was a little girl. Despite that, I was like, nope, never having kids. Well, sure, obviously, I mean, they're here, okay? So when it came time for them to be born, I realized how I robbed myself of prevention. Because yes, it's twins, so that's twice as many people. There's the extra people and the movement in the room. Now what happened was my blood pressure crashed. I had to have a C-section without an epidural and the woman who was in charge of possibly the grossest job <laughs> was not usually in labor delivery. Those of you who are nurses or whatever probably know this. I didn't know this existed, and forgive me if you're squeamish, but apparently they use a bucket to capture your blood when they do this kind of thing. And she got the tiny bucket instead of the bucket for the chick who's having twins. And my blood was everywhere. And people are screaming at Alice, get another bucket, Alice. Poor Alice. I tried to find her later and tell me, like, Alice, I'm so sorry. Okay. But it was everywhere. So this chaos, this blood, this everything that was going on, the energy of the people who I wanted with me couldn't be because they would not bring my husband in, obviously, right? I mean, my guts are on the table, like, <laughs> okay. If I would have allowed myself to step aside from fear and see the vision that I was being given, I possibly could have either prevented that situation by bringing it up, even in some subtle way, you know, we can make up things. To, we don't always have to go, yeah, I had a vision. Or my psychic said, um, I could have maybe done something to make that better, or I could have at least not have made it less scary for myself, made it less scary for my husband by telling him, yeah, not only are we going to have twins, but it's going to be chaos when they get here. <laughs> okay. So don't allow your humanness to keep you from fully seeing the vision being given to you. And if it is the worst case scenario vision, you need to ask yourself, is this real or is this the universe trying to make sure I take action? Because sometimes you will be told the worst thing and it's because spirit knows you won't do shit if it is not scary enough. And I'm gonna recommend to you now that you don't let yourself fall into that category. I know people who need their ass kicked to get a message. Do you really wanna live that life? over and over and over, bullshit, bullshit, rocks to the head so that you will pay attention. Listen to your intuition, lovelies. Take that in when it's small. Take the taps on the shoulder. And if you get the taps on the shoulder, and then you have somebody like me tell you what you already knew, you jump right that minute. I tell people all the time, if we sit down and talk, you are screwed. Because if the universe puts into English what was already whispering in your ear, you have zero time left to not take action. Zero time left? Pretty much. I mean, much. you have, if you, now action, okay, so let's say that the action is supposed to be get away from the asshole husband, move out, get a job, do whatever, okay? Can you do all that today? Probably not, <laughs> okay? But if you are taking action, taking steps, really thinking about your choices, then the universe gives you some leeway there, right? but sometimes there's not. And the better you are at it and the clearer messages you get, the less time you have. I have to act immediately on my intuition. I don't have a choice. 
I consider it a privilege. I used to think it was a burden, okay? But it's not. The more you are aligned, the easier it is to just say, intuition says, and so I do, right? Even when you have to dig in your heels and uh, push against somebody who humanly doesn't want to hear you. Um, okay, one more thing I wanted to make sure that I brought up, and we're doing good on time. It's like the universe is stretching time. <laughs> okay, um, there has been a lot, there is a lot of misunderstanding about manifestation. There is a ton of information going around that you need a very specific image of that thing you are attempting to manifest in order to be able to do it. This is not actually true, <laughs> okay? If that very specific image invokes in you the emotion you will have when you have it, if it helps you align to the as if, then yeah, it's useful. But if it doesn't do that or you don't know what that is, it's irrelevant. The thing that we really need for manifestation is feeling. What will I feel like on the other side of this? Will I feel peaceful? Will I feel calm, loved, ecstatic, whatever it is? Focus and anticipate that feeling. That is what leads you there. And always, always, whether it's feeling or specific, make sure that you put the blessing, again, that some of you could probably say with me, this, the equivalent, or something better. Do not limit yourself to your tiny human idea of what the universe has in store for you. If I had done that, I would not be doing what I am today, and neither would anybody amazing in the world. It is important that you release control, right? You may think you so desperately want this thing, but why wouldn't you want the equivalent, and why the hell would you not want the something better? But do you know people walk right past their something better because they're not open? Don't do that. Don't close yourself off to what this universe has in store for you. This, the equivalent, or something better. And do not give into the trap of expectation. You want anticipation. There is a difference. Expectation is void of action. Expectation is entitlement. Expectation is I expect the universe to give me this because I am a good fucking person. I don't care how good you are. You have to be able to anticipate, and you cannot anticipate if you are not taking action. Maybe that's just on your own thinking and who you walk around as as the world. Maybe it's you need to buy that domain, <laughs> right? You need to take that class. You need to do whatever. If you are not taking action, it's never going to happen for you, lovelies, because we are in the physical world. Devoid of a body, sure, instant manifestation. But here, expectation will rob you <coughs> of your highest good. Action, always, right? Every religious figure has some quote, my favorite being Jesus, who said, faith without works is dead. I don't care how much you believe. If you do not take action, it's not coming. I don't care how much you believe you will fall in love. If you never get the fuck off your couch, you are not going to meet him, right? Or at least online. I mean, virtual off your couch, okay? Which, you know, thank you, universe, for the means by which to communicate across the world. <laughs> I need for you to realize, lovelies, that even when the days are hard, you are a spiritual being in this world, and you are blessed and there is purpose. And please, 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 before I go, remember that everybody else is just a person too. Your boss, your kid's teacher, principal, the cop, the bitch at work, your husband, whoever, these are people with their own shit. We are not all the same. Do not look at them with sympathy. Sympathy is selfish. Sympathy is what would make me behave that way. Look at them with empathy instead. What could be happening for them, right? My husband comes home in a bad mood and I think about what it would take for me to behave the way he's behaving. It is fucking huge, right? But my husband's gonna be in a bad mood if there's too much traffic. If I'm sitting there thinking something horrible is going on in this man's mind, I'm gonna make myself crazy, right? For him, it's traffic, right? The, my son's principal was not kind to him the other day. She is a woman 
with a husband and children and grandchildren and employees and what it had nothing to do with him. Remember that, lovelies. Their shit has nothing to do with you. You don't have to fight them. Don't fight. Be who you are. And don't comply either. Don't fit into their box. Because that's not fair. Even at work, right? Sometimes at work you have to play the game. But you don't have to fit into anybody's box. Don't do that ever. Tear the box to shreds. I'm so happy that you came. I feel led to say something. And you don't probably don't need to hear it. But I have a 40-year background in metaphysics. And I still have questions in these. And I'm really open. I am... I almost have tears in my eyes because I am so impressed with my, I know, I understood everything you said to me with my hearing. You are so aware, so in tune, you're an amazing, <coughs> amazing Jacob Duff. I just felt like it. Thank you. And I want a card. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So have a card. Yes. All right, I will leave my cards up here if you need it to find my social media or my podcast or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll hang it. <laughs> okay. Um, my, like I said, my podcast is on everything. I'm on all the social medias and all that stuff. And, um, you know, come give me a hug. At my table is actually my student today. Her name is Connie Evans. She's a crystal intuitive. Go talk to her. Let her help you figure out what crystals that you need and all that good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, if I miss you, I'm going to leave some up here, too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Thank you for joining me today for this special episode of Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer All. If you enjoyed today's recording and would like to see me in person yourself to ask me questions or just hug my neck, come out and see me at my next seminar in June. Spiritual Growth Seminars with Jennifer Hall occur quarterly in June, September, December, and March. If you're interested in coming to the next Wellness Expo in Addison, Texas, that event will be in October. You can click Book Now on my Facebook page or Get Tickets on my Instagram page or go directly to Eventbrite and search Jennifer Hall. Until next time, beloved. Namaste.